Okay, so what we're going to do now is a gram stain, a differential stain. It uses two different dyes, that's why we call it differential. You can distinguish between different bacteria on here. Uh, so first thing we're going to do, as always, flame our loop. We have a slide ready to go here. I have two different cultures. The first one that I'm going to do right now is Staphylococcus aureus. So I'm going to take a culture or a swab on, make a smear here. Clean my loop. We need to heat fix once you have done a smear. That is going to adhere the bacteria to the slide, kill it, and also make the stain uh, easier to penetrate through it. So that's what we're doing right now, heat fixing it. I'm going to let it sit while I now prepare my second uh, slide, which is going to be E. coli. Flame my loop. I'm taking these cultures off a of Petri dish, so I'm coming off a solid medium. You could be coming off of a test tube from a liquid medium. Remember, always be working near your flame. So now I'm taking some of the E. coli, just like I did with the Staphylococcus aureus, as I'm going to smear it on here. Flame my loop when I'm done. And I'm now going to heat fix. Pass the slide through about three times. Now with the ground stain, there's four different steps to this. The first uh, step, we are adding crystal violet. We need to keep track of the time. We're going to add this, and I'm going to do both slides at the same time. The crystal violet, we're going to add it. Try to add a drop over the top of where you did your smear, you may need to add a couple drops on there and let that sit for one minute. The timing on this is critical. The gram stain uh, is going to use, as I said, two different dyes so we can distinguish between organisms. The first dye or the primary stain is this crystal violet. All the cells are going to look kind of a bluish purple color if you were to look at it right now under the scope. <coughs> this Graham stain was named after the person who developed it. It is probably the most basic and most fundamental and important stain that we do in microbiology. We use it to distinguish between what we call gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. The differences in the way they pick up the stains through this process has to do with the chemical composition of their cell wall. So the two different main categories, their cell wall composition is chemically a little different. Now it's been a minute, so I'm going to rinse gently with uh, distilled water. Now the second step, step is to add Graham's iodine. So I'm just going to flood the area with that. And that stays on for one minute as well. This is a mordant. It's going to help fix that crystal violet uh, and help it stabilize in the cell wall. So I say that the cell wall is different between two major classifications of bacteria. The gram positives, their cell wall is much thicker than the gram negative cell wall. The gram negatives have an extra outer membrane as well. And these differences in the chemical compositions are what make the staining process different in the end. So I say that iodine, it will remain on for a minute. So crystal violet was a minute, rinse, iodine's added on for a minute. And now we are going to rinse that off once again with distilled water. 
Now the third step is ethyl alcohol. Some people will say add this on for 15 seconds, rinse it, do a second 15 seconds and rinse it. I prefer to add it on um, for 30 seconds. This is a decolorization step. So the previous two steps, though, both organisms would have looked uh, purple or blue if you look at them under the scope. Once you add the decolorization step, what that is doing on gram negatives, because they have an outer membrane, which is more lipid based, the alcohol is basically destroying that, ripping it off and removing it. So 30 seconds, let's rinse. At this point, your gram negatives would be colorless, the gram positives would retain that purple or blue dye. The last step is we are adding saffron red. This is a counter stain or a secondary stain. Your gram positive should remain uh, purple and the gram negatives will pick up that red uh, stain. We leave that on for a minute. So your timing is crystal violet one minute, Iodine, one minute. Alcohol, 30 seconds. Saffron red, one minute. When we are done with the saffron red, we will rinse it off and then we will uh, blot the slides in the bilbis paper as we've done with simple stains, spore stains, etc. So now we will rinse off this final step. And we will just blot them in the builder's paper. Just be gentle as you do that. Let them dry for viewing later. Now up here on the board, I did just write a summary sheet of where you can see you add the crystal violet that stays on for one minute. That is your primary stain. Both your gram positive and your gram negative, that's what these stand for, will look that purple or bluish color. Second step, after a minute, rinse that off. Then you're going to add the grams iodine. That stays on for a minute. That is the mordant. It's helping to fix that stain. Both organisms would look purple or blue at this point in time. Third step, you add the alcohol. It stays on only for 30 seconds. That's the, your decolorization step. Your gram positives would look purplish blue at this point. The gram negatives would be colorless. And then the fourth and final step is the saffron red, which will stay on for one minute. That is your counter stain or your secondary stain. Your gram positives will remain purplish blue color. The gram negatives will be a red pinkish color. And please remember, before you even start this first step here, you had to do the smear on the slide and you had to heat fix it. If you did not heat fix your sample, A, you would not have killed the cells, B, that you would not have had them adhere to the slide. So you may not see anything at all because you probably washed them off. This is the gram stain. You need to know how to do this. This is so basic and fundamental to the field of microbiology.